Here's Bishop Kimball with today's message. Those who are joining by Facebook and other media outlets we have, we thank you for being with us. Today is a very special day to me, basically because of my the past week, some of the things I've been thinking about. So this is a very special day, and I just want to share with you, uh, not just today, but in the next weeks following, it's, uh, your spiritual life. How would you assess it? Your, your spiritual life. What about that? Why would it be so important to God to create us and place his spirit within us if he only wanted us to go about the natural way of doing things? There's a way that God wants things done. Your spiritual life is very, very important. There's this one doctor I go to once a year, just, just in September. Once a year, I go and have my physical, answer all the questions about my health, my problems. Did you take your COVID shot? Did you do this? You want to take your flu shot? All of this happens once a year at this one particular doctor. I, I, I have more than one doctor, but this one I go to once a year for my annual physical checkup. It's a very exciting time uh, because it's, it's, a, it's a lady. She's a female doctor, but she's very knowledgeable I'm looking at my charts and things, and I think this is wonderful. But there's a scripture that reminds us about spiritual checkups. When, when, when you see it, you're going to say, oh, yeah, that's right, that's, that's right. But your spiritual life is so very, very important, especially during the times we're living in. We have no spiritual understanding to the point where we can understand the times we live in. And whenever there was a time that God wanted people to understand, and that was all the time, he would raise up prophets and he would raise up leaders to help people understand what you're seeing is more than what's there. And what you're involved with is greater than what you think you're involved with. And this was the whole idea he called the church together the day of Pentecost. When they all came together, they were now going to be a group of people who understood God both in the world and in the life of believers. And that's, that's, that's very, very important. Not to come to church or come to the assembly or the cathedral or whatever you go to, only to go out and hide your spirituality so you won't be rejected by those who don't know God and don't want to know him. So the, 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 the scripture speaks about this spiritual checkup and allow God to be the doctor so there's no charge. Amen. I think that's very, very important to many people, especially me. When I could go to the doctor for what we call free, if you will. We talked about eating the right foods. What do you eat? What you shouldn't eat? But then God talks about it too. But he's not talking about food for the stomach and the natural life. He's talking about your heart and your mind. What do you feed your heart and your mind? What, what, what is it? This, this, is, this is God speaking to us. How much of this natural stuff you let go into your mind and function off that? How, how, how much stuff do we hear from the outside world telling us what's right, what's wrong, and we feed off that? What do you read? What do you think about? What do you let in your life? What, what, what constantly comes into your life? <laughs> My wife told me every time she come in the house, it's on CNN. 
so now you know what comes into my life. <laughs> See, I'm, 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 I, like, I, I, I like CNN. I like the news. It's always on CNN. I said, well, put it on ABC, CBS. I, I just want to hear what they're talking about. And there's a reason. What do you put in your mind? How often is it lifted up to God for him to analyze it and let you know that's not what I want there? Without the heart and the mind constantly being before God, there's some serious health problems. And I'm not talking about natural health. I'm not talking about something you could take a pain pill for. I'm talking about your spiritual life. When the heart and the mind is not constantly up before God, there is a spiritual crisis. It's a sickness. It's a disease. Now, there, there, there's nothing wrong with sports. There's nothing wrong with a lot of entertainment programs that, that, that people watch. I, I like to watch America Says. And there's, there's a lot, you know, you can watch. There's nothing wrong with that. But when it comes to nourishing the soul, we got a name for it out here in the natural world. It's called junk food. It's good. We eat it, but it's so unhealthy. As far as the spiritual life is concerned. I have my little pantry of junk food. I don't know how much vitamins in it, but it sure tastes good. And this is what happens. We, we can't have a diet of junk food for the heart and the mind constantly. It'll lead to a crisis eventually, especially spiritually. It'll lead to one. We need more than this if we hope to be spiritual people. When someone says, and I hear it now, more than ever, that they are spiritual or that they have experienced a sp spiritual experience. I'm a spiritual man. I'm not, I'm not religious, Bishop. I'm spiritual. What in the world is that? It's always something to send me home reading. I never heard that expression before. I'm not uh, religious. I'm spiritual. What did he mean? I should have asked him. What do you mean by that? When we use the term spiritual, what are we referring to? An event? A person? A spirit? What are we referring to when we say, I'm spiritual? I'm spiritual. I'm a spiritual man. Well, in the scripture, the church of Corinth, they had some serious problems. This church did. There were divisions. There were marital problems. They had problems about who's going to eat at the Lord's table. You know, Paul had to address that. Who takes the Lord's Supper? Some of the same things we basically uh, have problems with today. Do children supposed to take communion? It's, all, it's, it's always something, you know. But the main problem they had, listen to me, the main problem they had, some thought they were more spiritual than the others. That's the problem. That's the problem in just about any church when you have these spiritual gurus dictating the spiritual atmosphere of the church. When they themselves actually debate with the message that was preached, whether it was something that you ought to believe or not. We have those, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You've been around some time. You have these type people in the church. They had them in Corinth. What's more spiritual, those who prophesy or those who speak in tongues? Which is more spiritual than that? And this is a problem. It's a problem right today. They were suing one another. Paul talked about going to court against each other. Why can't you suffer the wrong? Well, that's a good question. It takes a spiritual man to overlook a problem and suffer. It takes somebody spiritual to do that. But they were wondering, am I right for doing this? Go and Paul saying that before the, the unbelievers. You all are just running out there. Spirit-filled people. 
before unbelievers airing out your problems. He said that ought to be handled in the church. They were more spiritual than others, and this is a problem today. In chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians, that's when Paul began to address the spiritual problem. He said, now concerning pneumatikos, now concerning spiritual. Gifts were added. It's italicized for, for, for clarity. The translated added gifts. He said, now concerning the spirituals. It's what you asked me about. What happened to the spirituality in the church? All the spiritual problem, all kinds of manifestations start breaking out. And these were people who were unaware of what was going on. The question Paul had to answer, here's, here's the question he had to answer. Did this come from the Holy Spirit? It's here. Did it come from the Holy Spirit? Is this the Holy Spirit? We don't see that type going on in churches today like we did years past. The whole atmosphere of the church have changed. And maybe the next couple of weeks I'll, I'll, I'll get to that. It's, it's changing. It's shifting because something is happening in the spiritual realm. Now, the question they say, is this from the Holy Spirit? Is what these people are doing from the Holy Spirit? Whatever you may experience, the question is not, did it happen? We know it happened. The question is, what spirit did it come from? Where did it come from? Who caused this to happen? If you had an experience that you consider spiritual, was the Holy Spirit present? Now, if you can't answer that, don't come ask me because I wasn't there. The question we all ought to answer when it comes to the things of the Spirit, was the Holy Spirit present? Is this the result of the presence of the Holy Spirit, just that simple. Is it? Now, we have a few pet gifts, speaking in tongues, prophesying. These, these, these are what we do. But see, these things were not just in the Christian church. Do you not realize Hindus, Muslims, the African religions, quite a few of them, and they're just as demonic as they could be. But guess what they do? They speak in tongues. Man, and it happens that way every day. Let's move on. What about the gifts of healing? Happens everywhere in all religions. As a matter of fact, if you go to your computer and you look up Antonio's healing hands, eight session package, one hour each, $1,500. And you can pay by PayPal. That's eight sessions. Oh, you want 16 sessions? That's available too. That's $2,900. That also can be paid by PayPal. $2,900, and you receive the gifts of healing. Wow. Who's present with that, according to the Scripture? $1,500, $2,900, and here's the thing. If you have questions or want more information, he only responds to those who have purchased a session. Now, this sounds very funny. It doesn't sound real. Does it happen? Sure it does, every day. The question is, is the Holy Spirit present? That's the question. Not how much it costs, but is the Holy Spirit present? If the Holy Spirit present, why do I have to buy? I thought it come from the Holy Spirit. That's why we can't put the word of God down. The, 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 the day of Pentecost, that was a truly spiritual experience. Why? The Holy Spirit was present and he was working. Amen. 
Now, we know that. We can read that in the Scripture. There was some experience the Bible speak about that the Holy Spirit wasn't present, but there was still a spiritual manifestation, but it wasn't God at work. You know, the seven sons of this Jewish high priest, the sons of Sceva in the book of Acts, they were at Ephesus. And these men wanted to do what Paul was doing. And they had an experience that wasn't so holy. The scripture says an evil spirit, not spirits, this is singular, an evil spirit came out of the man jumped on the seven of them and beat them naked and ran them out the house. One spirit did all this. Now that was, those brothers could say we had a spiritual experience. <laughs> but I tell you what, the Holy Spirit wasn't present, which meant that it wasn't a pleasant experience. But this, this thing of, of spirituality in the church today it is so heartbreaking because we don't know where it comes from. If the right people do it, we accept it. It's got nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. It's got everything to do with what I like and who I like. This is the day. Today, these spirits are just as active as they were in the Scripture today. There's no inactivity in the realm of the Spirit. In our country, in America, the spirit activity is being carried out and some people don't even notice it. We don't even know it's the Holy Spirit. We don't even know it's not the Holy Spirit. Many people don't know because they're unaware. Because when it comes to times like this where we should be hearing the Word of God and understanding what's going on, of course something else takes place. Paul talks about those super apostles, those false apostles who pretend to be seeking the well being of other people. He said they are deceitful, deceitful, disguising themselves as an apostle of life. It's all a front, if you will. He said, oh, don't marvel at that. Satan himself. the man they get the power from or the spirit they get the power from. He disguises himself as an angel of light. And without being that spiritually mature person, you don't know where the light's coming from. Is it coming from heaven or is it shining up from hell? All we see is a light. He can change his appearance. Satan can, but see, here's the catch the Bible lets us know. He can't change his nature. He's always the devil. Jesus said he was a liar. He'll always be a liar. He can't even tell the truth. There's no truth in him. How do we know this? It takes a spiritually mature person to know who you listen to and what you're listening to. Today, we are really in need of a spiritual approach to our world, to what's going on. Satan is deceiving people in two ways, their mind and in their belief. Their mind and what now? In, in, in their belief, the mind. You know, when you're deceived in the mind, it's called an illusion, a false idea, a misleading appearance or image that is not in accord with fact. And today we're faced with many things that's not in accord with facts. Where does facts come from? God. There's only one truth, and that's God's truth. Are you listening to me? There's only one truth. Let God be true, and every man a liar as it is written. Right here in the Word of God. But that sounds just a little off. It, it, it really does. It's a false perception, and these things deal with the mind. The mind. Then the synonym for this word of delusion is delusion. When you're deluded, that means your beliefs have been tampered with. So people don't know what to believe sometimes. It is the work of the devil, a false belief or opinion contrary to fact. Isn't that what we're living in now, times we're living in now? There's so much contrary to fact. 
resulting from deception. You know, an illusion comes from outside influences when people are in their mind. A false idea. Delusion is caused by one's feelings. How you feel about it. Delusion. I've been deluded. Or either illusion. In America and in the world, we're under serious attack, and nobody seems to know where it comes from. We're under attack. There's a serious attack. The more we hear of this pandemic, the more things change. The more you hear, something's wrong here. Something beyond the physical, something beyond medical science, something beyond all of this. Behind the scene, there's a spirit. You have to watch this. The more we hear, the more things change. As I mentioned not too long ago, the guy said the enemy we're facing is an unseen enemy, but he keeps changing on us. Your mind and your belief, your mind and your belief is at stake. Not Democrats and Republicans, not the next election. See, this is all a trick of the devil to keep you from focusing on what is the reality of the thing. The reality is not political parties. The reality is not 2022 or whenever the next election. The reality is right now. You have to deal with the now, not the group but your own personal self. That's what, that's what God wants. We're in a crisis spirituality. Why would I say that? Because people have gotten complacent. Complacent, that means if they're at ease. I mean, we skirt around with the mass and the safety and by all means continue to do that. but we're still too contented in our mind. According to the scripture, listen, 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 listen at me. Two things, the deception of going back to what we call normal. That's done, and now you're in a great deception. If you think we've gotten here only to go back to where we come from, you, you're calling God a fool, but he's not that. The deception of going back. You deceive into thinking, it'll work out, it'll work out, you'll get back to normal. So we keep looking back instead of forward. It'll be all right, it's going to be all right. And the second thing is not knowing the difference between deception and reality. What is the reality of the thing? The reality of the thing can only come from the Spirit. Paul knew things because of the Spirit. He was an intellectual man. He was, he was a very educated man. Paul was a smart man. He had all the awards and the accolades. He had authority and he knew people in the upper ranks. He said, I'm the Pharisee of the Pharisees. But he also said, I threw all that out the window for the excellency of Christ Jesus. When I found Jesus, when I realized the reality of what God wanted me to know was inside of me through the Spirit of God, it's so important that we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. It's vital that we have it. It's vital. If we follow Jesus, and this time, you know what they call us? Fools. See, we're in a life or death struggle here. If you take this serious, then our view should be the same views as those in the scripture. Are, are, are you with me? By the world's standards, we are fools as servants of Christ. That's what they in 1 Corinthians 4.10. If, if Paul, Paul was considered a fool. We, we fool for acting the way we act. You know why? Because we're reading life from the inside. God Almighty. We're reading life from where? The inside. That's, 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 that's where it is. We're reading life from what God placed inside of us. And that's, that's very, very important when you're talking about what God placed inside of us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, if you follow me through these scriptures, God created you with certain spiritual abilities. 
with intuition so you can know the things that are freely given to us of God according to the scripture. I don't look to see what somebody else have to want it. I have to see what God wants for me from the inside of me. Are, are you listening to me? Now, in, 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 in 1 Corinthians 1, 1 in, 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 in verse 3 through 7, listen to what Paul tells the church there. 1 Corinthians 1, verses 3 through 7, 3 through 7, I'm sorry. He says this. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given you in Christ Jesus. That in everything, hear me church, in what now? You were not going to be what God wants you to have, you have it now. We just have to learn to look beyond what the world is trying to feed us and zero in on what's inside of us. He says, in everything you were enriched in him, in all speech and all knowledge. You got the word, you got the word, and you got the knowledge. Even as the testimony concerning Christ was confirmed in you, <clears throat> so that you are not lacking in any gift, awaiting eagerly the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever it's going to take for you to live in any kind of times as you wait for Jesus to come, God has made sure you lack nothing. It's there. You have it. We need to have an experience with it now and not just talk about it. You don't have to look to the right or the left. You don't need a special group to belong to. It's in you. It's in you, according to the Scripture. You don't need your own special prophet when you don't understand things. Let me see what the prophet says. I'm going to tell you what the prophets say. Yeah, yeah, I say, listen to Jesus. You have everything you need right now, but we need to learn how to tap into it because you could be deceived and delusioned into thinking that just what the outside world is saying is all there is to say. He says this, you, nothing is lacking. That's the first thing. Nothing what? You need nothing. You have it. And then in 1 Corinthians 12, he talks about the spiritual gift. In Romans 12, he talks about it. In Ephesians 4, he talks about the gift. So now, if we're to live a life the way God wants us to live it, these things must be present in our life. Paul told Timothy, don't neglect the spiritual gift that's in you. Don't neglect it. He said, give all diligence. We, we, we use the term, say, study to show thyself approved. Study is not what I would call a scholastic type study of reading. Study means to do what? Be diligent, which means make, make this show number one priority, Timothy. Yeah. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Your number one priority is that you should be prepared in all cases, in all seasons, to present yourself to God. A workman need not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Why? Because you got both sides of it. You see the world view and you see what God is saying. Now you rightly divide it. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Now, here's what he said. The Bible asks a question. I ask this question from the Bible. Do you know what gift God has given you? You know what you're gifted for? You, you were created to operate in this world by what God gave you spiritually. You were created to operate in this world spiritually. God didn't just, just put you here and say, okay, go for it. No. He gave you a gift. God created us for what he wanted us to be and do. That's what he created us for. That's why you have a lot of things changing. You, you know, you don't have to be a man. You can be a woman if you want to be this transgender thing, this non-gender thing. All of this is an attack on your spirituality. It's an attack. It's deception. You were created to operate in the world, not just in the church. That's the problem. Where are we operating? What angle are we operating from? 
So we, 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 we see what Paul is saying here. We see the problem the church at, at Corinth had. We understand that these gifts are not just only in the church, they're everywhere. We see that the enemy is just as active as it is the Holy Spirit. The people in Corinth, in 2 Corinthians chapter, what is that? Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 15, yeah. I'm sorry, 13. There's no 15. There's 13. The people wanted to know where was Paul getting his information from? Wow. Are you with me? And they, they, they wanted to put him to the test. And this is what I want to come down to the end with, if you remember this part of what I said. First Corinthians chapter 13, I'm again reading at verse 2. I have previously said, when present the second time, and though now absent, I say in advance to those who have sinned in the past and to all the rest as well, that if I come again, I will not spare anyone. Mm, somebody going to get a whipping. That's what we used to say. Then verse 3, he says, Since you are seeking for proof of the Christ who speaks in me and who is not weak toward me, but mighty in you. They wanted proof <laughs> that God was speaking through Paul. Prove it. Uh, 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 are you with me? They wanted proof. The scripture says, since you are seeking proof, of the Christ who speaks in me and who is not weak toward you, but mighty in you. You want proof? Paul always believed that Jesus Christ was in him and spoke to him. He always believed that. That was not something he, he, he never had a second thought about. He told the Thessalonians, for this reason, we also constantly thank God that when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of men. It was not a good message the man preached that day. But for what it really is, the word of God, which also performs its work in you who believe. Now, if you only take God's word for the, for the hour, if you get only excited for Sunday and you don't let it do its work in you Wednesday, you're gone. The word of God was given to work in you, not to excite you or to stir you, your emotions and your feelings. The word of God was given to do what? To perform its work in you, but you got to believe it. You come to hear the Word of God because it wants to do a work where? In you. In you. Then again, he writes to, second, to the Corinthians in this second, second chapter, he says, I mean, fifth chapter, we are ambassadors for Christ. Listen to what he says. As though God were making an appeal to us, God was making an appeal. We just a vessel through us. We beg you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. Amen. Now that's important. See, this is where your spirituality begins. Christ in you. Yeah. That's where it begins. What does it be begin? Who's in you? Christ in you. That's where it begins. It doesn't begin on the outside of you. It doesn't begin because the atmosphere is hot. And I've heard expressions that people make like the spirit is high, the spirit wasn't the other day. What are you, the spiritual Gaga reader? What, 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 what are you? Or the spirit was high. How, what do you mean by that? I want to challenge that. Up and down, the spirit, the spirit this, the spirit that, or the spirit that left the church. Well, my God, let's be for real people of God. 
Let's be for real. Did the Spirit really leave the church and people still alive in there? Christ in you, where do we begin? Where did the spiritual dimension of your life begin? It begins with where? Christ where? In you. Christ in you. You could base everything else on that. And Paul makes it perfectly clear what he says. He makes it very clear. Christ in you. The mystery among the Gentiles. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's the mystery among the Gentiles. Christ in you, what now? The hope of glory. So he writes to the, the, the Galatians after they got all caught up with all kind of religious stuff and everything that he wasn't preaching about, some teachers that come down to Galatia, and they were actually breaking up the church. Paul said, oh, foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you? And he gets to the end of the letter in chapter uh, 4. He says, my dear children, I am suffering the pains of giving birth to you all over again, and this will go on until the Messiah takes shape in you. It's a process we go through. He planted a seed, and you have to water the seed, and you have to lift it up to God, and you have to keep it in your heart, and you develop into just like Christness. Just like Christ. It's a process. So the Corinthians want proof. This is what Paul said in verse 3. Since you are seeking proof that Jesus was speaking in me. You want proof? You want proof of what's spiritual and what's not spiritual? Well, that's a good answer. We all do. Is that the Holy Spirit speaking over there as the, the brother prophesying? Is that of the Holy Spirit? The sister speaking in tongues, is that the Holy Spirit? Do we have to wait after church to have our little holy huddle to discuss it? No, Paul says, no, 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 no. Check, check out your own spirituality. Listen at the advice the Scripture gives us to say. He says in, 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 in verse 4, For indeed he was crucified because of weakness, yet he lives because of the power of God, for we are weak in him, yet we will live with him because of the power of God directed towards you. Then he, now, now, now he says, verse 5, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to a close. I can't, I, can't, I can't go too much further than this or this. Or. He, he says in verse 5, test yourselves. If you want to know if God is in me, well, if God is in you, look at yourself. That's the test. You don't have to say, oh, that wasn't God. How you know? You got God in you. You got the real God. He said, don't test me. Test yourself. You got that? Test yourself to see if you're in the faith. You want to know if it's real? Well, is it real in you? Unless you become what? A counterfeit. You don't have to talk about, is it real? You ought to know it's real. You got it in you. There's only one Lord. There's only one faith. There's only one baptism. There's only one Spirit of God called the Holy Spirit. And if we all have him, we all should agree. Man. Test yourselves to see if you're in the faith. Is the Holy Spirit present? You answer that. You answer it. It is yourselves you must test. You want proof from Paul that he is speaking for Christ? What do you say? Examine yourselves. Don't you recognize this about yourself? Listen, listen to what he says. Do you not know that Jesus Christ is in you? You forgot that? Do you not know that Jesus Christ, the same spirit that works and the speaker should work in the hearers? Are you listening to me? If the Holy Spirit moves me, how can you challenge unless you be reprobate or counterfeit? Wow. Listen to what he says. Unless you fail the test, unless you're counterfeit. Examine yourself. You don't recognize this about yourself? By an ongoing experience, that's what he's talking about. You haven't recognized yet by an ongoing experience that Christ is in you? If the Corinthians would realize 
that Christ is in them, then they would have proof that Paul was a true apostle. And what he taught came from the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. I think that's wonderful. The only way I could see a gift or an experience have come from the Holy Spirit is this. Whether that experience that we're having is in the service to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, 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 now this, this is what I see in the scripture, and this is what I hold to. If it truly comes from God, it continues the work of Jesus Christ. If it's from God, it continues the work of Jesus Christ. It continues the work of Jesus Christ. But Jesus, one of the most important things he ever said about the Holy Spirit, come and say, he will glorify me, it's what he says. He will take of mine and give it to you. There's that, that, what I call that relationship, that spiritual relationship. So when you have Jesus, you have everything open that the Holy Spirit can give. You're open to it. Receive it. And sometimes that takes being alone until you grow to the point where I could take all the other stuff. There is no true experience with the Holy Spirit without Jesus being glorified. None. The Holy Spirit is not present if Jesus is not being glorified. The Holy Spirit can only continue the work of Jesus. He can only guide us in the things of Jesus. That's, that's it. If he's taking you somewhere and you end up where you ought not to be, the Holy Spirit didn't take you there. And I think if we look at our spirituality from this day forward, we can understand some things about what God is doing and what God is saying. I bought a couple of books up here with me that I had for years and years. <laughs> 33 years ago, 33, 1988, this brother swore that he had information from God. And this is a whole book of scripture. Look, look at all this. These books back then were too long. Now, I'm going to hold on to these. But this is a good example that I rejected this because I didn't think he was speaking from the Spirit. My own belief did not receive this. It sound true, full of scriptures. I mean, it's full of scriptures. This guy was a rocket scientist. Who am I to go debate with a rocket scientist? But I was right. I was right. It's 88, 33 years ago, we still here. So who lied? <laughs> then he said, oh, I missed it by a year. I missed it. My calculations is off. He's coming in 1989. <laughs> My spirit rejected it. I couldn't believe it. I don't believe it. People bought these books. Churches bought these books and started having Bible studies. If God is in it, his word will confirm it. Are, are you listening to me? So when you say I'm a spiritual person, what you say is I don't listen to everything. I don't accept everything. I get my confirmation from God who lives inside of me. Well, I guess those were selling so good at $2 they come out with another. The day and the hour Jesus will return. When Jesus himself said what? No man. <laughs> Don't ever let that go. If it's in you, when you got the word in you, don't ever let that go. Your spirituality is based on the work God is doing in you. Are you listening to me? Not all the things that's going around you. What God is doing in you. What God is doing in you. That's the first part of this message I wanted to give today. The only way I could see that gifts or experiences have come from the Spirit of God it's whether or not that experience is in the service of Jesus Christ. 
That's it. Is it, is it serving the Lord's purpose of people being saved, of people being enlightened, of people turning away from lies and deception? That's the Spirit of God working right there. That's the Spirit of God. And I'm going to pray today that we have an understanding of what God wants us to have so that he can teach us and show us, even in the infant stage, God will bring it to maturity in Christ Jesus. Now, there's an article I, I, I was reading, and I'll start from here next week, that uh, the article literally states, people pursue their spirituality and is shaped by the group of the church which they belong to. And I, 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 I partly believe that. Your spirituality is shaped by the group or the church you belong to. You know why? Because we all don't have the same understanding about the spirit. We, we, we don't have it. And it's very important that we do have it. So always remember the next time you hear the news or you pick up the the newspaper and you read something, always remember that's what it says on the surface. And you pray, you ask God, what is, what is this, Lord? What's going on now? What's going on now? It's a spiritual world outside of this natural world. And you connect to that world. You connect to that world. And God will let you know exactly what's going on. Uh, are you with me? I want you to stand. Let's pray. It's all about your experiences, whether you call them spiritual or unspiritual or whatever you call them. But it's time for us to know what's inside of us or who's inside of us. It's time for us to understand that God created you for this world and the world to come. You created for it. You have the what is and what is to come. That's, that's very, very important. And I believe with all my heart that God is preparing us to meet him when he comes back. He's preparing us for that. And I thank God and I praise him for it. You know the spirit is present. When all the activities... Points to Jesus. Points to Jesus. And I don't need a group. I don't need a committee. All I need is time alone with God. Father, I thank you. First of all, that you are opening our eyes to these difficult times we're living in. You are exposing the false and bringing into reality the real like never before. And Father, we know there have been so many who said you spoke to them, who prayed so fervently under the disguise of the Holy Spirit, but we know better. Thank you for letting us know, even though it looks real, it may sound real, but it could be a delusion. It could be a lie. Because Satan transforms himself as an angel of light. It looks glorious, but it's full of deceit, death, and destruction. I praise you now, Lord God, that you are bringing to our understanding what it really means to walk in the Spirit, to live in the Spirit. You're bringing it to our understanding. And these things that's going on in our world, there's something behind the scenes, Lord God, and we trust you, and we depend on you, and we love you, Lord. We serve you, that we will constantly examine ourselves. We won't wait like my doctor once a year. We're going to do this on a regular daily basis. Am I in the faith? Do I believe God? Do I have a word for this? And I bring it all to the cross of Jesus. And whatsoever is not of God 
is a lie. And I, play, pray, I, I praise you for that reality, Lord. Let God be true and every man a liar. Stay in the word of God, people of God. Stay in the word of God. Always remember what you see in this natural world. There's something also going on in the spiritual world. And let's walk in the spirit so that we'll be able to see, know, and hear the things that God would have for us. I pray your blessings upon your people, Lord. I pray that you would just give them the understanding, the, the revelation, that you would give them the sight and the hearing they need in the name of Jesus, that we will not be taken advantage of. We will not be led astray, for we are your people, Lord, and you said in your own word that we come behind in no gift. We have everything we need that pertaineth unto life and godliness, and we stand on your word today that I have it. I have it. It's in me. I'm not a counterfeit. In Jesus' name, we pray and we thank you, and the people of God said amen. 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 You may have your seats now, ladies and gentlemen, as we want to return our gifts to the Lord at this time. I, I, once again, I really appreciate everything you do. I'm not a good beggar. I don't know how to do that. I was asked once to come to his brother's church, and he said that uh, he wanted me to raise an offering, a nice offering. He said, now, nah, you, you go ahead on. They, they, they,